Song of Solomon, Chapter 5 The Bridegroom I am come into my garden. We talked about the garden in Chapter 4. My sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. And it be Isaiah 55, 1 through 2. Note on that. Eat, old friends. There's somebody there is not just a bride. Going to eat. Drink. Yeah. A lot of people, when they see that word drink, and they'll say Boaz and he was drunken and drank. Well, right away they think, you know, booze. Now, you can drink water, you can drink milk. Not always have to be booze. Ye drink abundantly, O beloved. And there's this messes of verses I can give you. Isaiah 65, 8. Acts 2, 13. Deuteronomy 32, 14. Reading the other notes here. The wind, like I said in the previous chapter, is the Holy Spirit, John chapter 3, verse 8. Fruit bearing needs light. The garden into verse chapter 5. That's Jesus, the light of the world, and needs water, the Holy Spirit. I sleep, but my heart waketh. Now, this is the bride speaking. It is a voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. So that's where you get pet names. He calls her my dove. You find Revelation 3.20 likening to this. My head is filled with dew, my locks there with the drops of the night. I'm sleeping kind of like outdoors. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? Excuses by the bride. I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? They're excuses. We're in a day and age that they'll have excuses to do anything wrong. And excuses on how not to do what we're supposed to do. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door. And my bowels were moved for him. Now in the Old Testament, locks kept out animals, not the people. No lock on the door. When the Lord comes for us, there's going to be nothing going to hinder us going home to be with Him. Though some will try, I guarantee. I rose up to open to my beloved. And my hands dropped with myrrh. And my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh. Upon the handle of, my, of the lock. Opening up to the Lord. Not opening up to the wolf. I open to my beloved. Jesus stands knocking at the, at the door. Of the final church age. But my, my beloved had withdrawn himself. And was gone. We jump back into Darkling, Psalm and his wife. We look to Israel. Realize when Stephen preached to the nation of Israel that the Lord Jesus Christ was standing. Had they not stoned Stephen. All things would change for Israel. You have gone into the seven year great tribulation period. Jacob's trouble had to happen. 
has to happen. And then you take 30, let's just say 33 AD. Take a simple number. You add 7 to it. The tribulation period. 40 AD. If they had, and I know they did it, but had they received Stephen's testimony, one thousand forty would have been the end of the millennium, thousand year reign of Christ. Thirty A.D. seven years of tribulation period that brings to forty A.D. Then the thousand years reign of Christ, we would be in glory. Today, the rejection of Israel of their Messiah in 2015, we are still in a period called the church age. Jacob's trouble has not happened yet. The church has not been raptured. At the preaching of Stephen, if Israel had received the Messiah. Things will be different, and but they did it, so they open up the door, and Jesus sits back down. And he sends out Peter, James, and John. A man named Saul gets saved, called to the Gentiles, but he preaches to the Jews. He has a heart for the Jews. He's given a new name. And I forget which chapter, but at one point in his ministry, the book of Acts, he says, you know what? I'm done with you guys. Your blood be upon you. I'm going to the Gentiles. And God has set aside during the church age the nation of Israel. Jesus Christ is sitting. Some would think he's sleeping. He's not. He's just seating. Waiting for the Father to tell him, go get your bride. Had Israel received Jesus Christ as their Messiah, there would be no Gentile bride. But the foreknowledge of God. But he had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul faileth with when he spake. Can you imagine that verse in Acts chapter 1 when, when the apostles are standing there, the 11 apostles are standing there, and there goes Jesus gone. Now, I think it was a voice or was it an angel. A voice or angel says, to, what are you doing looking up? Get going. Don't you think they'd had just a couple days of, well, you know, he came in the upper room, we were fishing, and he showed up on the shore, but he says he's coming back, but we just don't know when. I saw him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. How many people just want the Lord to come? And yet he's been silent. He's coming. Verse 7 is the book of Acts. And today, the watchmen that went about the city found me. And they smote me. And they wounded me. Isn't that what happened to the apostles? All apostles but John suffered violent deaths. John it was boiled in oil or water, I forget which one it was, and then left to die. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. The Thessalonica church that Paul writes to were under the, the torments of the world and Satan. And persecuted. Ephesus. Paul is in jail for the word of God. I forget which city he was in where he was stoned. The keepers of the walls 
took away my veil. Shame. You know what they're doing today? They're taking away the word. They're taking away God from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem. You know who's causing most of these attacks, the Bible says? The Bible says the Jews are your enemies. You're to love them because they're beloved of God. You know who persecuted the disciples in the book of Acts? Primarily the Jews. You know where some of our persecutions come in America today? From Jews. They hate us with their Bible talking about their Messiah that they don't believe in. And when you get a man who is a Jew converted to Christ, amen, glory to God, sitting on a video or going to churches, which I've had been in churches, where Jews go around and they will sit down and show you the Passover meal, everything that is done, and how much it fulfills the New Testament scripture. The Jews that reject Jesus Christ hate that. I charge you, O Doris Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of love. The Jews are not looking for the beloved today. If they were looking for the beloved, you think God would be so cruel and hide himself? You know when the Jews are going, listen, I love and I pray for Jews. I pray for missionaries that deal with the Jewish people I don't even know. Paul says pray for Jerusalem. But do you know at what point the Jew is finally going to realize they're wrong? When they open up that veil and sitting on the mercy seat or in the holy place, the most holy place, is the Antichrist. And he tells them you must worship this image. They can't. Their law, which they will be under the law in the tribulation period, forbids them. You know what the Roman coins in the temple money was? Jesus says, hand me a, hand me a penny. And they hand them a penny. Whose inscriptions on it? Rome. Uh, Caesar. It is illegal for a Jew to have a coin with an image on it. So what they would do is, that, you know, in the temple, they would have people who would take the Roman money and give you money with no inscription and no images at a price. That's why Jesus taped the tables over, selling everything for a price. You weren't supposed to charge usury and all that to your brethren. They're not looking for Jesus. They're not looking for God. How is that temple going to be built? I have no idea. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? Thy beloved is the Lord Jesus Christ. The other is another man, religions, or science. Or education. Anything other than Jesus Christ. O thou fairest among women. What is thy beloved more than any. Let me try it again. What is thy beloved more than another beloved. That thou dost so charge us. It's a lost question. What, what is your Jesus compared to my religion. What makes the Bible so? We have a great explanation of the Big Bang. and You know, you believe God by faith created the heaven and earth. We believe by faith through the Big Bang. What's the difference? Aren't we all going to the same place? 
I got my religion, you got yours. It's good for you, and what's good for me? The bride answers. The lost questions in verse 9, and the bride answers in verse 10 to the end of the chapter. And what you're going to see from the bride in the Song of Solomon is the description of Lord Jesus Christ. When? That's a good question. That's a very good question. But here is the bride. Here is us answering the lost people. The lost people, people say, O oh, thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved? Jesus Christ more than any other beloved. Anything else? Okay, here's the answer. My beloved, Jesus Christ, is white and ruddy. Ruddy is a reddish. That describes David. He's a reddish white. There goes Hollywood. There goes the pictures of the Last Supper. He's red brown, like Adam. The chiefest of 10,000. I don't think that number is just thrown there. There's got to be something about that 10,000. His head is as the most fine gold. So Nebuchadnezzar's image is a counterfeit, an antichrist of what the bride says about Jesus Christ. The highest standard that man puts on any material is likened to the head of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Nebuchadnezzar's beast had a head of gold. I believe they called him King of Kings. I believe that was one of his. I, I could be wrong about that one. His locks, his hair are bushy, overgrown, thick, shaggy, hairy, full. Long hair. And black as a raven. You ever seen a raven? I don't know. What's the pictures of Jesus? hair look like? I don't know. Is it black as a raven? You know what the raven was in the Bible? Wasn't that the one that Noah sent out? He didn't come back? What is his description? It says, as, not is. Jesus Christ does not have raven hair. Ravens don't have hair. It is black as. His eyes are as, not is, the eyes. Of, he don't have dove eyes. But if you were to look at a dove, at the eyes of a dove, that's what the eyes of Jesus Christ look like. By the rivers of water, where thirst has been quenched. Washed with milk, I have no idea how you wash eyes with milk. And fitly, properly, set. He doesn't have an eye that drifts off. They are perfect eyes. Do you know that every human being I've read somewhere, every human being, their eyeballs are the same size. Just different color. But every human's eyeball, no matter how far back in the head, how forward, every eyeball is the same color. I mean, same size, excuse me. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. I don't know. His lips, like lilies, drooping. 
or dropping. I don't know the difference between drooping and dropping. Sweet smelling myrrh. His words are sweet and proper smelling. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. Five golden rings, two turtle doves. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphire. His legs are as pillars of marble. They don't shake. They don't bend. They don't break. Of course, they bend at the knee, but I'm talking, you know, he's, he can stand. And he was standing when Stephen was stoned. Set upon sockets. Assume the knee joint, the hip joint. And whatever the joint is to the foot, ankle, a fine gold. Now that's not the Nebuchadnezzar's image. I, can't, I think it was iron. Complete opposite. His countenance, his face, is as Lebanon. Something about Lebanon. Listen, you want to get a, a study of, of the Song of Solomon. Go and visit and study Lebanon. But you will not find a Lebanon that you found in Lebanon in Solomon's time. Very different place. And I can read you people who visit there. I can read you people who study there. But that's not the Lebanon that was of Solomon's time. Remember, you're writing this about 1014 B.C. is the date in my Bible. How many wars have been over there? The nation of Israel has completely how many times rejected God? Nebuchadnezzar has come through the land. The pharaohs have come through the land. There's been wars fought over there. Excellent as the cedars. And Lebanon is known for the cedars. In which the environmentalists and the tree lovers, they, they rank on Solomon because... You know, all the trees they took in there, they've been dwindling. His mouth is most sweet. The Lord Jesus Christ. Yea, he is altogether lovely. I'm going to tell you something in a minute. This is my beloved. This is my friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Where did that come from? John 15, 13 to 15. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem. Imagine that telling that to a Jew. This is what my beloved is. Now let me. This is my beloved, this is my friend. His mouth is most sweet. His countenance, his eyes, his head, his cheeks. You know, verses 10 through 16 is not so to the lost of verse 9. There are people out there who hate Jesus. There are people out there who he is not friends with Jesus. There are people out there that Jesus is going to tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me.
There are people out there who just outright reject Jesus Christ for what? Verse 9. O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved, their beloved, more than another beloved? My beloved is better than their beloved. But they got somebody else who's beloved. And is not the beloved of God. This is my son who I am well pleased. Speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a this is the church responding to the lost world about the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is. And you know what the Lord you know what the world says about Jesus? He's white. He's got curly hair. How come their pictures don't match our picture of the Bible? They did a movie, The Passion, about Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, in the Bible says, the Bible says that you couldn't even tell that if he was a man. Now, I don't know anything about that movie. I don't care about that movie. But I don't even know who played that movie. But I feel sorry for the guy who played Jesus Christ in that movie and has to be standing before Jesus Christ one day. Oh, really? And you were me? I guarantee you, I have not seen that movie. I don't want anything to do about that movie. I guarantee the guy that played Jesus in that movie was not Jewish. How sweet would his words be when the cameras are turned off? I'd be very careful with Christian movies and having a character in them being Jesus. I'd be very careful. You got some nerve to think that you can be likened to Jesus Christ. You got some nerve. You got some nerve to even liken yourself to Moses. Somebody comes up to you and says, Oh, I'm a Christian. They got a beer. Their conduct. Hey, I'm a Christian. I say, okay, fine. You are? Then if you are, I want you to tell me what Jesus Christ looks like. Bible. You can't know that. The Bible. I just read to you out of the Bible what Jesus Christ looked like. I can tell you. I can tell you chapter and verse. And it doesn't say go paint a picture. You can't paint the picture of this. Because this is the Lord Jesus Christ in a man who has trusted him as his Savior in your heart. You can't fathom what Jesus Christ looked like. I'll tell you why. You read this right here. Because we are still under the cursed world. We are still sinners. Christ is not and ever was a, a sinner. Christ is in the glorified body before God in heaven. Christ is holy in perfection. God told Moses, you, no man can see my face and live. You know how holy God is for us to be in his presence? He's got to give us a new body. We, blow the, we, we would blow this body right now. John said I was in the spirit in Revelation. Not in the flesh.
Paul's flesh was in a pile of rocks. His spirit, I believe, went up to heaven. You're never going to know and fathom the Lord Jesus Christ until the day we see him. And it, it, even still, it will blow our mind that there he is. And there he is with the marks in his hands and his feet and in his side. Now, I've got scars all over my body. I am 40 years old. And on my ankle, I have a scar that I got when I was a little boy riding a bike. That scar will be gone one day. My scars when I worked for this, the submarine place will be gone one day. The scar I got working for the grocery store will be gone one day. And all the other scars will be gone. I will have a new body, no pain, no sorrow. No trouble. Yeah, I will be for the Lord Jesus Christ. Scarred because of my sins, because of my iniquity. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, the riches of what the scriptures will tell us. As we study from Genesis to... I don't know how far we'll get. Solomon chapter chapter 5. What a great lesson about my Savior that the world can't know. I know.